So I, I am not a Vietnam expert. We need Joanna B. here or someone like that. So Bill Heine told all those lies to you, and you believed him. <laughs> but I, I, uh, I have uh, thought uh, just, just a little bit, about, and I wanted us to have an opportunity. Some, some of you may just rise oh, to the right there and shine forth this opportunity. So this is very last minute, so I'm actually just kind of going by the seat of my pants, so to speak, and we'll, we'll see where this leads us. I guess one thing is we're kind of gathering here. Um, I'd be interested to know how many how many of you are teaching Latin. You are the teacher of Latin. Okay. All right. Very good. Now the next question is, how many of you want to be teachers of Latin? Okay. Some of you that raised your hand earlier raised your hand. <laughs> uh, the rest of you are here just because you want to take uh, it back to your school. And, well, it's it's we're we're looking at doing some adjustments to our Latin curriculum, and I'm administrator, so okay. I do some teaching if I have to when it's when I'm in a substitute situation. Um, so I have. But we're looking at adjusting it a little bit to make it a little bit more, I think, useful for our kids. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, how many of you are teaching in a school? Uh, how many of you are teaching in a school setting as opposed to homeschool setting? School setting? How many are involved in a homeschool setting? Yeah. Well, Sunday. <laughs> Sunday? All right. This room still isn't big enough. Okay, well, this is supposed to be a round table thing, so I am facilitating making this easy for you. And so, what sorts of things, um, uh, what sorts of things do we need to talk about regarding lab instruction? Uh, what sorts of things do you come maybe having questions about? And let's get some of these questions out, and then let's share some possibilities here. Uh, what sorts of things are going on that, that, that you want to know about? I just have a question for the younger grades. Um, what's the feasibility of starting like in kindergarten rather than at third grade or you know when they're a little older? So I'm gonna write some of these down. Be interested uh, in what other people are doing. Okay. And why. When when to start Latin instruction? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's just write some of these down. When to start? All right, what's some other uh, kinds of questions here? We can address these. Well. Classical versus ecclesiastical. Mm -hmm. Okay, classical uh, versus ecclesiastical. All right, what else? Integrating use of Latin into chapel. Okay, cool. Latin and chapel. All right, is that a suggestion or do you want to talk about that? How yes. How many, are, <laughs> how many are going to the Lutheranism and the Classics Conference at Fort Wayne, October 1st and 2nd? How many of you know about this conference? <laughs> okay. He's going to be here, uh, Dr. Bruss, uh, Bruce, or whatever his name is. And he's on the agenda. Oh, is he? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. right. Jump you guys. What? Well, I think we're going to give him a time. But, yeah. He came last year to invite us to his conference. He's going to come again this year. It's October 1st to 2nd, Fort Wayne uh, Seminary. I, the reason I thought of that is because two or three of their chapels are going to be in the Yes. Okay. Yes. True. Okay, what are the sorts of things? Just basic things like how to get started? Uh, the curriculum. Or curriculum okay. materials. How to, get, how to get started? Uh, materials, yeah. yeah. All right. Curriculum materials, mm -hmm. resources. All right. Where do you learn it yourself? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Self learning. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Maybe discussing some of these things. We can, uh, we can, uh, All right. So. When to start? Uh, when to start Latin? When are those of you that are currently teaching Latin, or Latin is being taught in your school, when is Latin being taught? What, when we start in kindergarten with just some 
basic vocabulary. We use the, the Song School Latin CD that, so they learn just basic words and the kids love it. And I what's mean, the resource that you use? Could we also do Yeah, that? that's a good resource. What's, and it, what's it called? Song School Latin. Song School Latin. Uh -huh. Classical and Academic Press. Yes. Classical and Academic Press. And we had been doing that up through second grade and then starting with uh, Primer at the third grade level, mm -hmm. um, we're finding that it doesn't transition well mm -hmm. into that classroom, and so uh, we're going to go with. I can't, Diane, do you remember the name of the curriculum? We're changing our curriculum for the younger kids this year. That's more vocabulary based, mm -hmm. rather mm -hmm. than so much grammar right away. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, the Latin for Children is, is what we use now, but this is um, Prima Latina. Oh, I think yeah. it's Prima is Latina is what I we're going to be using that. because it's um, more vocabulary based and it's not quite so intense all at the beginning. So you have this, is it called it's Song School? S song School Latin. Song School Latin. Yeah, and it's, and it's from... It's kind of a CD... It's, uh, it's, CD it's purely piece. CD. It's got about 60 different songs on it. There's a workbook that goes with it for the or a teacher's guide that goes with it. And there's um, games, too. And there's games and all kinds of things. So okay. you're learning some basic vocabulary words. And then this uh, Prima Latina. Prima Latina, from what I understand, is... Press. Yeah. Okay. And it's um, more gra grammar based, so it's kind of the tr a transition piece, and we'll start that with our third graders this year, and then do the Latin for children um, with our kids that have already started this past year, and work on that. So we're ju just going to do some transition with that, but we think that starting them with kindergarten is essential. Just to get you them have a used to it. Program, uh, we have a preschool program, and we've uh, kind of elected not to do Latin with this just because of time. At this point, it's you know half day for preschool and our pre kindergarten, and just getting them through the Spalding and getting through the math pieces, um, and then the religion and um, other things. You know, takes up the three hours that we have the kiddos there. So uh, we do all day full day kindergarten and so there's a little bit more time to be able to incorporate the Latin in it. Anybody else using the Song School Latin CD? Your school is where you're growing in? Sir, I, I know you, you you are at home, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. And you oh from Sheridan, Wyoming, you're from Yeah, Sheridan. she's from Sheridan, I'm from Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Oh from Sheridan, Cheyenne. You're from Sheridan. Sheridan. Okay. Well anybody else using the Primo Latino? And where are you from? Uh, Northwest Wisconsin, Hammond, River Falls, Wisconsin. Okay. Is it school or homeschool? One of you Okay. Hey, <coughs> I'm from Christ Lutheran Academy, and I am only in my, I just finished my second year teaching for as headmaster, and last pepper, year. Pepper, pepper, yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Be careful what I say. Um, uh, I was introduced to Latin using Prima Latina last year. Um, this year, Pastor Smallwood came in and wanted to try something different. Last year, I'll, next year, I'll be going back. Hmm. Well, the next. Christina. Uh, Christina. Sure. Christina. 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 What was your school's transition into after Prima Latina? The Latina Christiana. Christiana. Yeah, which is the next up. Yeah, so I have not used Latina Christiana, but I'm going to next year okay. because I did the Prima Latina. Last year, okay. The, the yeah, Prima Latina is the uh, that's the that's the, the, the very beginning of the yeah. right Latina Christian. What do you do after that? Yeah, no, Latina right. after the Latina, Latina Christian. Probably haven't been there. There's a one and two. Yeah, I've gotten there. First form, first form, and then Latina too. Yeah. Is that your question? Yes. So they're all from Memorial Prep. How many of you are going the after, okay, ones. you understand that the Suprema Latina is part of the Memorial yeah. Press curriculum, uh -huh. and then after that is, is uh, yeah. Primer 1, Primer 2, mm -hmm. is there Primer 3? They're working, um, Canon Press is working on Primer 3. They've recently revised Latin Primer 1 and Latin Primer 2. It 
really doesn't look like the stuff before that was very vocabulary based. Mm -hmm. This has right. a lot more syntax in it. And while they were working on that, we picked up um, Mat and Latin 1 and Mat and Latin 2, where you learn about this poor girl named Yulia <laughs> who gets kidnapped by pirates at the end of Volume 1. Um, then all of a sudden she's back home and dad's paying the teacher. And Latin. <laughs> but that's Canon Press, and now that they got through both the older kids in the first year, we're going with uh, Latin Primer 1 and Latin Primer 2. But we'll use Mat and Latin with our third graders and any new older students. And then we're picking up Song School Latin too. Right, okay. And we start in kindergarten as well. Heavy on vocabulary, basic instructions. Um, you use Latin Primer, okay, we've skipped another resource here. You, uh, you use Latin Primer 1 for your first grade, one for kindergartners. Uh, well, for kindergartners, the youngest, we've got classroom commands, and they'll have song school Latin. And then a transition from that, Matt and Latin, also Canon Press. This is a Canon Press? Right. Mm -hmm. And then now and then primer. Latin Primer, and then there's all kinds of things beyond that. So, so one go, up top. So you go here to this Latin school. Right, then Latin, down four. To the Matt and Latin. Yep, mm -hmm. then up to number three. And then three. you go back. Then you go to the Latin primers one and two. Right. Matt and Latin puts some blinders on with different tenses, verb forms, and noun forms. Latin primer one takes off the blinders. Right. Now, one difference is, is, is Matt and Latin ecclesiastical Latin? No. You can pronounce we, it we, either yes, way, but we've gone classical. You can pronounce it either way. Because if I think Latin primer one and two is classical. Classical. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. You don't have to use the tapes two. once you know it. Oh, okay. And so, so we just, we go classic. You don't use the tape. They come with tapes. You don't right. use the tape. You pronounce everything which way. Because the other question is classical, classical. versus ecclesiastical. Classical. Classically is. Unless we're singing. <laughs> unless we're singing, you know, Wenny, Wenny, Emmanuel just sounds weird. Don Anobis Pachin. <laughs> yeah. But you're also the one that asked the question about Latin and Chapel. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> we sing a lot of Latin. So you'll sing it. Prayers. Sedite, sedete, oremus, um, verbum domini. Deo gratias. <laughs> it's just wonderful. <laughs> okay. Has anybody lost so far? <laughs> uh, I have a question, though, uh, and, and maybe this will come up <coughs> to number six. Yeah. Um, okay. Our staff have has never taught Latin, um, but I would like to, uh, I taught, my classes stayed with me. I started with third through sixth, the next year I taught fourth through seventh, this year I'll teach fifth through eighth, same kids. So I started the fourth grade mm -hmm. in the Latin, but no other teacher has. Right. So now I have this new group of third and fourth grade, and who aren't going, it isn't going to have Latin because None of the other teachers know anything about it, um, and are well don't know anything about it. How does your does your kindergarten teacher know? I don't know if one of you are the kindergarten. Um, did you know Latin before? No. And were you apprehensive at all? Yes. So <laughs> how, did you convince, how did you how did you how were you convinced to go forward? Um. The headmaster told me I had to. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, I appreciate that. Right. And then just just through um, working with them and trial and error, and then realizing how the derivatives are in our language and how yeah. it connects so well that the children, they'll see a word now and know the Latin right off. And I'm talking first graders. Okay. And I love that they can see that. That yeah. that way their their grammar is improved because of Latin. And it sold me to go with it. Okay. Did so you the do children studying before, just the summer? Yes, the summer before. Okay. On each of these and and when you're learning and using all these, you truly appreciate what the children have to go through. Okay. So I was the guinea pig. And there's really good there's really good teacher resources out there that go along with the curriculum resources. And um, 
because, like I said, I substitute, yeah. and I've substituted in every class this year, and I've taught Latin with every class this year. Okay. On a, you know, just kind of an ad hoc basis, and they're always correcting me on my pronunciation mm -hmm. okay. and things like that. But um, I, I kind of get a kick out of it because that mean, that tells me they're paying attention and sure. they're learning it, and um, even the little kindergartners just think it's real fun to be able to say every now and then they'll pop out a word of Latin in, in the classroom for uh, whatever their discussions may be and they just think it's fun and our, t our parents have been extremely impressed with the fact because I've had people come in and say do you learn foreign language and I said does Latin count and they go you learn Latin yeah. and mm -hmm. I'm going yes that's a foreign language that we teach um, and it's very interesting, in the state of Wyoming, they mandated a foreign language starting with our second grade kids in the public schools. They cannot find teachers to do it, so they're considering dropping the piece of legislation. And we go, we got it made because we're already far beyond that with us starting with kindergarten. And I'm going, it can be done. And, and going through the various sources, resources is excellent as a teacher because you should know this much to teach that much. Sure. So don't be afraid to buy them, check them out. Then you do know the ecclesiastical as well as the classical pronunciation and you can identify that with the children with anything you're learning from prayers to songs to just simple vocabulary. The derivatives and how can they sound that way. The pronunciation thing, it kind of becomes silly oh, after does. a while. You can read Dorothy Sayers' 58 paper, mm -hmm. which is 1958 paper. Um, but the kids, they start to notice, oh, Pastor uses a different dialect mm -hmm. than Mrs. Pendergraft or Mrs. Russell. Well, okay. they, it's so much more scary to us mm -hmm. than it is to it them. It is. Mm -hmm. They can see it right away. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, some of these, uh, for some of you that are talking about self-learning, I know that, I know for certain that the Prima Latina, and I'm pretty sure the Latin Primer 1 and 2, was, uh, all come with teacher uh, DVDs, mm -hmm. almost to the point where you could turn on the DVD and yes. you know, have, have the kids uh, watch the DVD, although a suggestion might be is to have the teacher watch the DVD and then and then have the teacher try it out and you know, teach the students. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you're unsure, you, you can go through it together. Mm -hmm. You can watch the DVD together. Maybe on the, I, think, I think everyone uh, that I've talked to sort of started somewhere in there uh, when they didn't know Latin. They, they either watched the DVD themselves or they watched it with the students. And, and then after a year or so, they became confident that they didn't even bother with but that's a good way to get started mm -hmm. if you haven't had a formal Latin class. You just use the use the DVD and during kindergarten. Uh, I just picked up the song school for Latin within moments. I mean, the music sets the words, it says everything, so it's not like there's no difficulty uh, to that. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the song school Latin for the young kids is. Uh, it's real catchy tunes, and some of them are very familiar tunes, uh, like Farmer in the Dell and things like that that the kids have heard. Now they're just hearing different words to go along with a very familiar tune. It's like, that's what I mother. My mother is really my mother. My mother is really my dad. <laughs> So they're like Barney, they rip off the tuna from something else. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I found uh, that maybe, I'm going back some of these resources, I don't know, I haven't looked at the latest Latin Primers 1 and 2 by Canon Press, but uh, we first introduced Latin uh, when I was a school principal at Faith Lutheran School, Plano, Texas. And we had several sections that, that we were starting, and, and, and uh, uh, because we had two third grades there at that school. 
So we started out using the Canon Press, but we found, and I don't know, I'd be interested to hear from you, we found that the, uh, it, was, it had a, basically, at the time, it had a vocabulary list and the same, mm -hmm. kind of, and that was it. It was very Chats. bare bones. And so we felt as though that was lacking. And one of the things that I was very impressed with our teachers, uh, in fact, we developed it, uh, several of our teachers together over several years, a whole um, uh, companion set of other historical uh, facts, maybe dealing with the swords or the soldiers or uh, different kinds of little pieces of timeline history that, that, that they worked into the uh, to the lab program as it went on. They didn't have it all there in the first place, but as it went on, uh, they were able to do that. It gave the teachers an opportunity to, to really develop the program and to insert things that they thought were useful and helpful. So I, I would suggest that if you think about doing something like that if you have the Latin River 1 and 2. The Prima Latina, on the other hand, they have, was it Men of Rome or Famous men of Rome. They have, they have, they have, Rome, Rome, they have yeah. a couple other that you go, and as you're going along, you read about some of these guys, mm -hmm. and and uh, there's questions there for uh, it, with each lesson, the kind of mm -hmm. sort of basic review of some of the famous men of Rome. So they have a little, they have more there, uh, but it's they're choosing. You know, they've chosen that this is important. But it's already there for you. Sometimes if you're starting out with it, that's helpful. Uh, your Latin Primer 1 and 2, on the other hand, I would think that in time you, you would want to add some things to that. Otherwise, if you get basically was it 10 to 15 vocabulary words in a Latin saying, and that's, that's good. That's why they had to do the revision they just Right, completed. it's not so, the same. So there's a, okay, it's, I haven't seen the revision. Now. It's, yeah, it doesn't even look like the same. No, it isn't. Is that right? It's better, so. Okay. That's why we went to the Matin Latin, because of the Latin Primer 1, the first one, was more for first graders than anything else. But with the revised one, we're supposed to be getting that more into speech. Uh, one thing that I'm kind of interested in is anyone teaching, I thought I heard six, seven, eighth grade Latin? Okay, is that this year for the first time? Mm -hmm. Sixth graders? Mm -hmm. Seventh graders, right here. And <coughs> it will be the first time for uh, class, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Okay. It'll be the first time for sixth through eighth. Okay, so the seventh and eighth graders have had Latin or haven't? They have had it, yes. Okay. It will be the first time that I will be teaching, that the school will be teaching sixth, seventh, eighth. Okay. So the eighth graders have had it since sixth grade? Or? Uh, correct. So you're in your <laughs> third year of implementation of Latin program? Yes. Okay. okay, I see what's going on. So, uh, so as you're, you're working your way up through this, this is what always happens, you know, you start a good thing, what do you do? Uh, what, what is being done after Primer 2? What is being done after, looks like uh, Primer, Primer 1, 2, and, and then there is Primer, or Primer 3, or whatever they call it. There's, I know we use that up through sixth grade at Faith Plano. Um, I think that Prima Latina did something, has something like that. You can kind of use it up through fifth or sixth grade. Is that right? Is that about what you did? That's what we're looking at, yeah. Okay. What about seventh and eighth graders? What's what's being done? Well, we, we use actually the Mars Hill uh, Latin Grammar 1, 2, 3, and the Latin Grammar 1. Uh, but then after that, we're using Wheelock for seventh and eighth. Mars Hill, how just to far. clarify, Mars Hill is also the can of press, right? I think that's right. Is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I don't know why yeah. they use the Mars Hill, but you're right, it's yeah. can of press. So you use that up through? Through uh, sixth grade, pretty much, although it's kind of shifting up because we're, we discovered that the, the first primer book is for, we only start with third grade, and it's a bit easy for third grade, so we kind of are accelerating it a little bit. Um, so somewhere, between sixth and seventh grade, they start to be long. Okay. And then we've been taking two years to do as much as we can. And I have a seventh grader, an eighth grader, who this coming year who should finish Wheelock. Okay. 
And that's that's it's about three years for us at least at the pace we do go. Do you use the reader also, or do you? No. You don't know, you know, no time you don't, for that. You don't, you don't do the reader. I, we've you got just, you do the exercises there. Yeah. We've got two hours of instruction a week, and so. It's okay. Uh, pros, cons, struggles, blessings on wheel locks. And yeah, I was going to add two questions to your list there. Uh, one of them, you know, have how to get started. You know, the, the, my question is, how do you get finished? Yes. <laughs> what, what's, the, what's the outcome? You know, where, where are we going with this? I want my children reading the Aeneid. You know, I want them reading Caesar's Gallic Wars. I, you know, I, I want them reading at least a, you know, some of those, those things. Um, how do we get them there? You know, I, I, hopefully they'd be doing that by high school. And, you know, we're homeschooling our two oldest, and we're not really quite there. And it's, you know, Variety of things that work into that, but uh, so that that was one of my questions. I, I like Wheelock. It's it's very sort of classically oriented. It's you know, a lot of translating. The transition that we have from Latin primer or Latin grammar one is that those are very formulaic sorts of sentences that they're translating. You know, it's basic subject noun, direct <laughs> object, <laughs> indirect object verb. Kids will learn to anticipate. You get into Wheelock, <laughs> and and the, the grammar they're learning for the first I don't know 13, 15 chapters is probably all the same as what they've already learned through Latin grammar and Latin primer, um, but the sentences are not formulaic, uh, and so they have to they have to make a transition up to the next level. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, verses or prose right from yes. antiquity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and I know the, re the Wheelock's reader goes, I mean, obviously there's long passages. Yeah, and then there are some longer passages in there, too. And, and the great thing, well, what Wheelock does not have, it doesn't have a whole lot of the, the cultural sort of things, I would say. It doesn't, doesn't give you a whole lot. Uh, it does give you some, I mean, there is some section, but it doesn't tell you about, what, you know, home life. Um, uh, there's not really extensive descriptions of Latin authors, except at the very beginning, there's one very brief section. Uh, so there's some supplementation that really probably needs to be done uh, in order to do that. Um, a lot of it really is going to come down to um, how well prepared your teacher is. You know, and I'm kind of learning as I go, just like, like the rest of you. But um, uh, the more the instructor knows, the easier it is to, to bring those things in. I promise your kids are wrong. The trips are wrong. And I'm sure. <laughs> That'd be a huge motivation. Uh, actually. That's okay. good. Well, would they need to speak Latin or something else? That's yeah. true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's, the, here's another observation. Just um, I, my, my oldest two children are being homeschooled now. And, and um, last year, it was just the oldest one. He wanted to learn Italian. Absolutely no intimidation whatsoever. Oh, I can learn that. Um, and, you know, he didn't get all that that far in it. Um, this year they decided they want to learn French, and part of that is because they are actually going to Europe, and that has nothing to do with me. Um, but <laughs> they wanted to learn it. They're not in the least intimi intimidated about learning another language. Uh, and really quite easy for them, and a lot of fun. They, uh, so that's one of the great positives, is you kind of think forward toward, you know, where do we get to a goal? One of those is that new foreign languages yes. are just really interesting. New Testament nice. Greek isn't anywhere near as scary then. We listened on the way here, the Song School Greek CD. Uh -huh. Oh, that's brand new. And the Teacher's Guide has a DDD. And I haven't seen that yet. But so the students are going to keep you on your toes and hold it down. <laughs> yes. Good. Well, it's, uh, well it's, that's Koine Greek, so no, I don't know. We, we had uh, the, uh, the, prof, the prof was here last year, I can't think of his name, he's at Edwardsville, and he and Russ and, and I don't know who the other professor was that was here talking about the Classics Conference. Nordling. What is it? Nordling. Nordling. It wasn't Nordling, it was oh. the other, this third one now. Oh, okay. And, and he's from Edwardsville, oh, okay. and he came, he came to speak at our school, we talked about him, and his wife came, and she teaches at a private school in St. Louis. And she teaches from junior high school all the way through to high school Latin and uh, Springer. Yep, Carl Springer. Springer. And uh, she she used Oxford 
for seventh and eighth grade, and it does bring in a lot of historical. Uh, and I bought it, and, and for my daughter, I haven't started that with her, and um, it, it does use a lot of historical information. And stuff. Also, Henley is a Roman Catholic. Uh, you could start it in, in in grade school and move up into, you know, it's a fairly sophisticated Roman Catholic position or uh, um, curriculum, but it's it's very. Uh, and that's by Memoria Press, I believe. Is it again? Yeah. Well. I don't know if it's by Memorial Press, but that's who this is for Well, they have the current copyright. You can get it from Memorial Press. Yeah, yeah I tried to uh, use a little bit of the Wheelox also, and also recently uh, tried using Henley's Latin. And, uh, I kind of like, you know, you got to get through the Roman Catholic doctrine a lot about Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary, Mary Mariology. Um, but. It's, it's not bad. Okay. Yes? How to get started? We don't have any Latin, and <laughs> we are not a classical school yet. Yeah. So my question is number four. Okay, how to get started? Yes. Well, we all have stories uh, to s tell. I'll, I'll go first. I'll tell you kind of how we got started. When we, when we decided that we wanted to pursue classical Lutheran education at Faith Lutheran Plano. Uh, we decided that probably the very first, I thought was the easy step, he just get a step would be to introduce Latin. And so that's what we did. We, uh, we also had a unique opportunity in that there was some uh, unhappiness with the current Spanish program that we had. So I said, well, we can fix that. Latin. And then, because Faith Plano is a very hard headed bunch of people, and uh, I can say that, <laughs> <laughs> having been there, some of the people that were there, to sort of, we had to have an apologetic, so to speak, as to, you know, why teach Latin. And we did, some of you have seen the SAT score stuff, and maybe some of the things Excuse that me. can be found about Latin instruction. But the other thing that we did was we actually, called this faith plan supposedly has the best you know, educational system, secular education, the best educational system in the whole wide world. So we called their Spanish teachers and we said, what do you think, when, when would you introduce Latin instruction if you had the opportunity? Oh, first of all, yes, we would, we would teach Latin. And second of all, we would do it before they had Spanish. Mm -hmm. So I took that bit of information back to our school board and said, well, guess what? All the people who you respect over here have said, and, and this is enough to get started uh, for us. So we use a little bit of local uh, what do you, uh, That's kind of the way I guess I'd say that we, we went about doing that. And the, the way we did it was we, we, have, we just happened to have a couple teachers on staff who had just a little bit of Latin either in high school or in college. Okay. One of the things I think you might want to be aware of, especially those of you who have schools and are thinking about accreditation, one of the things that the CCLD accreditation, which is brand new, and I hope that you'll go to it's one of those sectionals that Jackie Heath will be leading, mm -hmm. but one of the things that we are seriously contemplating, and I don't remember whether we put it in there or not, I think we did, we might have been in that class, but I, the, the, uh, the board directors for the consortium is saying that the teachers in, in a classical school need to have a basic Latin that means, right? <laughs> it means that we think that, that the teachers at your school should know some Latin. Okay? And uh, I don't think we need to be intimidated by that. It just means that as we are all lifelong learners, we, um, we take up a little Latin instruction. So as you do, uh, one, another way to get started Administrators, you are in charge of the agenda at your school is what's done during in-service trainings, however often you have those. Um, start doing things that would lead toward Latin instruction. Uh, talk about these things uh, that we're talking about right now. Talk, bring back the ideas that, that, you, that you gained here at this conference. Um, talk about the pros of Latin instruction and um, just, just begin the dialogue. And then as one administrator did, then you simply say, okay, so we're going to do it. 
and uh, I might add to that. When we started it, obviously you you've got to have an apologetic not just for your school board. And that wasn't an issue for us, but parents. You know, we had parents that you know were very skeptical about it, and their children would come home, you know, frustrated or. You know, the children themselves had no expectation of learning Latin. And so you're overcoming barriers there at the beginning. Now, I don't teach the younger ones anymore. I don't know, maybe the teachers, Heather, maybe you can speak to this. I, I don't see that anymore at all. Parents just know this is a part of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, the children know this is just what we do. In fact, I, the children seem to like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They do. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they, they really do. Uh, of course, they get up into my class and it's not so funny. <laughs> I'm not near as creative as the other teachers and I just make them work. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, 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 so don't get discouraged if they, you know, if you get some opposition at first, that's probably pretty normal. You'll hear that it's a dead language. Uh, I heard that all, all the mm. time. It's a dead language. Really? It's a dead language? Then what are all of us doing in here? Yes. It's dead, you know? Uh, there's a revival of Latin mm -hmm. in America. Uh, it's, a, it's a good thing. Uh, so it's, uh, I would argue against the whole concept of being <coughs> dead. Uh, but then uh, just promoting its, its blessings. Uh, so I think you really need to start beating that bandwagon in your school. Some of the uh, promising aspects of Latin. Okay, but do you, okay, the school is kindergarten through eighth grade. Yes. So do you just start with kindergarten Latin one year and then build? Yes. Is yes. That you could probably do it a variety of ways. Um, All of them start. To, to tell you how we handle at our school, we, we, don't, we don't do Latin by grade, we do it by mm -hmm. where the child actually Level. is. Mm -hmm. um, which means you could have, what, a seventh grader in with the third and fourth yes. graders or whatever. Yeah. Sure. Um, start them all. And uh, so when you get new students in, they can't start, you know, at level oh, three or four. Right. They've got to start yeah. down at the bottom. Yes. And, you know, you could probably, if you've got the teachers <coughs> willing and able to do it, you could probably start a number of grades at once. Mm -hmm. uh, and just some of them might move faster than others or something like that. But For you as an administrator, you have to use sort of block scheduling mm -hmm. to do the same thing. Yeah. You also have to have more than one. So you basically have a Latin block. Everyone goes to Latin from such and such a time, mm -hmm. such and such a time. You just go to your appropriate, uh, we do the same thing. Is that, is that what you yes. mm -hmm. yeah. Actually, you we, do that, we do that for a lot of our subjects now. Yes. I just, I, the whole grade thing is so artificial. Yes. <laughs> uh, that I, I, that's maybe a completely different discussion someplace, but this whole grade thing is so very artificial. No, I think for schools it's very necessary to make it work, especially from an administrator's standpoint. I've been there, and you, you know, you almost have to use this more block scheduling yes. uh, kind of thinking in some of these things. Homeschoolers have it easier, I think, oh, yeah. because who are the homeschoolers again? You all are going to be homeschooling. You just got to get the kids to homeschool. No, we have okay. three. Oh, you have the kid. Oh, okay. Well, that's still not enough. So three. you're waiting for? The age. The age. Right. They're, They're homeschooling right now. They're three years old. They're oh, homeschooling. Oh, okay. okay. That's just right. Right. Everybody's homeschooling. Right, right. Yeah. Just just school, right. We just have a story for them. Tomorrow. Or Tomorrow. Why Friday? Thursday. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so we're home educators too. What's that? Yeah, we're home educators as well. So yeah, we don't have to deal with the divisions, but at some point you have to communicate with, with uh, others and uh, you know, having some idea of what grade your children may fall into is helpful. I think. Right. This whole idea of not stretching. I mean, not. Uh, uh, if you have a new student come into your school, see. That, that, that becomes the problem. Right. If they're a seventh grader, but, but you've got one Latin teacher in from such and such a time, she does, uh, he does this or this or this, you know, the block schedule idea really reduces that problem, but not a problem at all. If everyone goes to Latin, they just go to Latin. Mm -hmm. so. Or math, math the same thing. Obviously, Everything. If you're a math, math teacher, reading, I science. Math also. Oh, math. Uh, that's a biggie. Oh, really? All the subjects. Uh huh. Like people were saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay, other things here that uh, you want to uh, talk about or things we didn't just cover well enough? Yeah. <laughs> With regard to self-learning, it's worked for you know, 160 years in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, when pastors get together for Winkles, they study the Greek New Testament. Well, why not have study groups and work on Latin? You could even read the Vulgate once you get to that point. Read scripture in Latin. Yes, and there's uh, fun ways to incorporate these things. Uh, <coughs> some of these things, I think, can be done by repetition. If, if every class period uh, I actually learned this, of course I kind of knew it, but I, you know, Dr. David Scare at the seminary, every one of our classes we always would say the Apostles' Creed in Latin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You do that every day for the Apostles' Creed in Latin, right? And he never said, he never talked about any of this stuff, he just started rambling off and one day we decided to follow after him. <laughs> uh, so we do a very similar thing in our house now, what I also taught in, in school, say the Lord's Prayer together. Mm -hmm. And I say table prayers. Yeah. Prayers, and songs, and then sing the songs, and then when you have your Christmas, whatever you want to call it, uh, have, the children, uh, uh, have them sing for a Christmas service. Mm -hmm. and then say, have them sing uh, Happy Birthday. Or mm -hmm. have, have them sing uh, one of the Christmas carols or one of the Christmas hymns in, in the Latin. Uh, very, very fun. There's uh, Dr. Seuss books uh, that once you get your Latin Those going, I think they can read it, but I, I think that it's fun to be, they like to listen, the kids like to be read too. So if you can read to them, to Dr. Seuss book or not, they can kind of follow we along, they know the story already in English. So fun things like that. I understand, and I don't know where it is, but supposedly, uh, what was his name? Somebody has sent us copies of the small catechism in Latin. Does yeah. I, uh, does, uh, okay, it's, it's available. Wonderful. I have a copy of it at home. Yes. Okay, yeah, here. Yeah. We need to get okay. uh, yeah. we we need to get them out uh, because Pastor Heine sent me an email saying that this fellow that, that had done this for us, he sent twenty or thirty copies here. So you guys go first. <laughs> 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 so, something new with your homeschoolers is that your kids get far enough along. We, for our home devotions, we read through scriptures, you know, just regularly, and the oldest ones have a copy of the Vulgate, and they follow through in the right. Vulgate while the others read in English. And, uh, Sweet. That's a good way to Yes. For those, also, for those that have gone through uh, Lutheran catechesis and uh, have learned the catechism, wow, you know, uh, that's, yeah. that's a very easy thing. So you can memorize last year. We different. used the catechism for my son. He finished confirmation and then he was taking typing, and so he typed out the Latin oh, catechism. He loved it. And I worked on his typing. Yeah. Good idea. Great idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one, one thing that we do at home to help with memorization is we use the triple out of the creeds and the Lord's Prayer. Yes, that's right. All right, anyone else? I have a question that changes gears, so maybe somebody okay. else. Okay, Heather? Well, I was just going to say, if, if people are looking for suggestions to uh, ways to improve your own Latin in a more structured way, I found one of our Wyoming Community Colleges had an online Latin course, two semesters of Latin I signed up for, took, and, you know, I had some backgrounds. The first semester was really quite easy, but you know that would be something you could do. Mm -hmm. In fact, the books—I I don't know if anybody uses these um, in our schools, but uh, it might be another thing as a resource to look into. It's uh, Latin for Americans, and the first books have a lot of little stories about you know these cute made you know, of Latin people. But the second book has a lot of selections from uh, from Caesar and other things mm. right in the textbook. Um, Good resource. Is it Casper, Casper College? College? No, it's Laramie County Community College. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can also get the same thing through like the North Dakota Center for Distance Education. I, figured, I think yeah. BYU does it too. I think there are probably a lot of them out there if you look. And so if it's online, you can do it at your own course. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think, is Joanna B teaching that course? Yeah, she's doing a Latin mm. in, a, in the Latin in a week class. Oh. 
Ooh. I think that might be through Veritas Press. Okay. We have boot camp. She's yeah. doing a couple of them. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's fast. All you know, Joanna Dean, Dr. Ed Beast and Jackie. Do you know Jackie B? If you don't, if you want to get caught up with them, let me you know. I saw them passing out Joanna's business card. <laughs> I had. Uh, we, we use Shirley Grammer at our school. I don't know who else uses that. One of the frustrations that I have as a Wheelock Latin teacher is further along is that, is that my kids don't seem to make the transition from Latin grammar and English grammar. They don't seem to make the connection as quickly or as fast as I would like them to. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that it would be much more efficient if you could teach Latin and English grammar at the same time. Yes. And my guess is, is this is a long-term project because I don't know of anything out there. We're expecting you to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, uh, please. Uh, so <laughs> maybe I'm just planting a seed here for somebody, but there, there ought to be a There is a way. book called, I think it's something like English Grammar for Latin Students. Mm -hmm. it is. Something yeah. like that. Oh, really? You might look that up. Okay. I haven't looked English at it. I don't know. I, I think I have heard of that one it also, of English Grammar for Latin Students. I, I don't have it. So I, I think one of the problems... Students. One of the problems, I, I like the way that the Shirley Grammar has children uh, talking Patent. about parts of sentences very early. Mm -hmm. I know the teachers, when we first introduced this, they were saying all sorts of bad words about me underneath their breath. <laughs> but then by spring, you know, they suffered through it. And then by spring, mm -hmm. they're like, hey, Mr. Keezer, we want you to come down to the classroom. The kids have something to show you. And they were giving them sentences, and boom, they were, they were diagramming the sentences and able talk intelligently. But one of the things I'm finding uh, along we also use, have used and are using Shirley Grammar is that the, the way they talk about uh, the, the actual words in the sentence, they, they don't use a whole lot of the terms that we use in Latin. They don't use like, nominative and genitive and dative cases. They don't talk about cases at all. Uh, so th there's a discrepancy in the, the use of the grammar. Uh, I'm fine. Anybody else see that difference? Mm -hmm. So sometimes, uh, sometimes I, I teach Latin at, at home, and so I'm talking about the nominative case, but you know they don't call it that. And so I'm thinking, okay, what do they say? I'm trying to constantly, in my mind, think back to what they what they call it in, in Shirley Grant. You know what, what we've done? Because uh, can I just use this real quick? Yes, here. Okay. Visual, but because my kids have special needs, so when I do the nominative, I just go nominative and I go SN. Because that's yep, the subject noun. Okay. You know, when we go data, that's we're what going I do. IO, DO. And then I always just do it like that so they see both. Sure, the yeah. yeah. Well, and, uh, they also have, uh, is it the Latin course that has the, uh, you know, that they use the, by, with, or from case, the two important mm -hmm. cases, uh, and so forth. Is that, uh, is that, is that the uh, Prima Latina that, that, that uses those? So I, mean, I, I like those because it, it helps describe the, the case um, in, a, in a very basic way. I, I like that. But even here, if you don't know, I mean, now to do this, you know, if I'm a starting Latin teacher, I have to know, I have to know my Latin grammar, and I have to remember my Shirley grammar. Right. No, I don't. You know, if you're teaching Shirley grammar, which I think is, you know, I've, I've personally been supportive. I know other schools have used Shirley grammar, but now you kind of need to know a little bit of both to put, them, to put them together, which can be difficult. One thing I like about Henley's Latin is that you have to diagram sentences in Henley's Latin. That's you have to good. Diagram the Latin sentences. And I don't think Wheelox has you, there's no diagramming of sentences. But in the early lessons, you have to diagram them. The frustrating thing about that is, of course, they, the Henleys uses a different way of diagramming than Shirley does. So, but that, that's not always bad. I mean, you know, to get kids to accommodate uh, is, is not terribly bad. But it, it, is, it is one of those hoops you have to jump. And if you start them early, which we did um, the grammar and Latin, often we have the class at the same time where we will be showing, you know, like she did on there for the singular and yeah, plural blend and blend them together. And then even just write a few Latin 
words in their um, grammar sentences so that they can see the subject noun. And that's why we're using that ending because it's the subject noun this time and then move it over into the direct object and then change the ending. So we incorporate Latin and grammar together and that really helps them to identify those. One of the things I kept from, I think it was my seventh or eighth grade year with my English teacher, she had us memorize prefixes, suffixes, mm -hmm. and root words in Latin and in Greek. Mm -hmm. My sister has now taken over that classroom, so I got access to the files again. <laughs> but I've made copies of those, mm -hmm. and it, it helps mesh things together. So we're trying to figure out where to put Greek in right. now. <laughs> Any, anything, this is uh, it's kind of open topic here. Any, anything else? How much time do you guys spend a week? Oh, goodness. Well, we do every day, we do a little bit of grammar. I mean, Latin and grammar. And then we also have set time, block time for it. Because we do warm-ups on pretty much every geography, math, Latin, grammar. So, every day. <laughs> I, I used to, we, when we started uh, at Faith Plano, we started with two days a week, and then the older kids, three days a week. Um, <coughs> in time, we found that that, you know, that, that you, you need to just be in a day, like, it's so much easier when you it is. daily. It is. You'd, you'd be better off having it for 15 or 20 mm -hmm. minutes a day, rather than two 45-minute blocks. Much better. I think it's easier uh, for us. Or at least for me, you know, the older I get, my mind, I need it every day. <laughs> 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 I resemble that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else feel the same way about that yeah. or have a difference yeah. of opinion? Definitely. I really believe a little bit every day, and it's really nice. I think Latin is one of those things that there's a great success rate for kids. If, if you use what I, especially in the early grades, with all these top K to six, Sounds like I haven't really had much experience in song school, but the Prima Latina uh, and uh, all the way up through there with uh, uh, Latina Christiana, which is, follows this Prima Latina. Right. Okay? That follows us here, the Prima Latina, and after that is the uh, Latina Christiana. All right? For those of you that are trying to keep track of this, all by Memorial Press. But all of these, and I'm not sure about this one, but I'm guessing so, I'm certainly here, this can all be done by recitation. Yes. Uh, you, you can do it all by just saying, you know, Amo Ha Sama, Amo Sama, okay? And just saying yes. it back, and then you can go around the classroom. And, and uh, skip around and play little games, you know, whatever. And the same thing with the vocabulary words. Uh, you can do that. So there's a lot of way so that the kid, you know, you don't, you're not, you don't really, there's not necessarily a lot, at least I found, with younger children, especially the little bitty ones, K, uh, kindergartners, say, okay, go home and here's your assignment, all right? Your assignment might be go home and tell mom the a mm -hmm. or the wide of the chain, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Or read this together with mom and dad at home, right? here's the list. Tell mom and dad how to pronounce the word, mom and dad are but a, a lot of it, a lot of it can be done in class, and there's mastery right, right there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. This been helpful. Thank you. Anything else we need to talk about? I had one suggestion for the chapel. I don't know if you, if this would be appropriate for divine service, but Lingua Angelica. Mm -hmm. Do you use that? We haven't. It's beautiful. They have beautiful songs. Some of them are Roman Catholic. There are some things to Mary, but not all of them. Okay. I, fe I did a quick search, Latin Lutheran online, and I found um, Ben yes. Mays, who's at CPH, before he went to CPH to work on Gerhard and Luther. He translated a lot of stuff into Latin and uh, had some from a Latin language Lutheran hymnal for years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's just sitting there like a two meg PDF file sitting around online. Where? Um, hmm, I'll have to find that link. Yes, yeah, so when you learn the hymn, you do both the English and the Latin. Right, and you know it's a hymn. Right, yeah. We don't know enough Latin to know to do that. what are we singing, you know? <laughs>
Yes. Father's Day. Jesus loves me. They know that one well. Or when I when I was uh, also at choir, we we had the day in other parts of the Chicago. Yes. Was right. Of liturgy. Yeah. That was, that was part of the tour we did one year in the Kirk Me Ball Church. We we sung the we sung the major portion. Of the mm-hmm. With Lutheran Service Builder, I could just put in the LSB version of the hymn and then find the Latin version and put it on the facing page and put together a little Latin hymnal for the kids. Or, yeah, what's the, uh, the Advent, uh, the Antiphonal? Oh, yeah, the uh, O oh, Antiphons. Oh, yeah. oh, I, think, I think the kids could pick up on that. For Definitely. You have one each day. Mm-hmm. Good. So maybe some other opportunities. All right. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you.